Yes, everything okay? Show me your thumbs up, please. Okay, we've heard a lot of stories today, a lot of signs, a lot of new things, and a lot of things that we knew, but we refresh our minds with it. So, I'm a little privileged to be here to tell you my story. So, I'm about to give you my story. So, before that, on the count of three, I will try a little cheap trick to get me some momentum and energy and to get you hyped up. So, okay, in the count of three, I want you to shout out your name as loud as you want to, because that is the start of your story to be told to the world that is going to spread through the TEDx network. Okay, so if you know, one, two, three, Ose! And the mummies are awake. Okay, so nice to see you here in Uvascula. It's a great privilege to be here to tell you my story. Um, I wasn't always the guy I am now. I'm uh, doing a lot of things now. I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a musician, and I'm activist on many things. I like to work on many levels and many things. But once upon a time, I was in ninth, ninth grade, and uh, I will connect Arda now. I didn't like to sit a lot. I liked to rap a lot. I wasn't sir sit a lot. I was sir rap a lot. So I didn't have motivation a lot to just sit, copy, and write text that wasn't too much important for me and my dreams. But of course I had dreams and of course I have had enthusiasm uh, uh, towards many things. And uh, I had two things in my mind, basketball and rap. And of course ladies, but everybody knows that. And uh, I had one big, big dream because I kn knew when I started rapping here in Uvascula in the late 90s, around 98, that I will not make big bucks uh, by, by rapping, doing rap. And I'm not going to make to the NBA because I was really short and I knew that I'm not going to be uh, putting more uh, height anymore. So I had this dream to become a gym teacher. But I didn't have motivation to read that lot. So I had uh, on ninth grade when I graduated from the mid-school, my uh, average grade was 6.8. And if you know, that's not good. You have to have uh, plus 8 something. So I took a hefty little timeout for one year. That's a big timeout. If you know basketball, that's a really long timeout. So uh, I went to the 10th grade, and uh, there was a really good thing that I found out. You get to do uh, internship for two days per week. So I called my old friend at Kuokkala school, uh, and uh, I asked that, can I come there to do a two-day internship as a gym teacher? So of course, I loved that a lot. I went back to school for three days, and it was jungle. All the people who were full ADHD on everybody were in the same classroom, not willing to sit, not willing to learn things in that way. So, um, on, th on, on that September, November area, I was playing a lot of basketball in the men's team in the uh, number one division. I wasn't playing that much, so I played in the second team also. And simultaneously rapping a lot, not sitting a lot, but rapping and basketball. And then, and one night I went to Lauka, it's a small place near Uvascula. I played a really good game because this is my memory. Please let me share it. Really good game. I was the, I was the best player in the team. The first time I dunked the basketball, it was Fred. And then I came back home. And when I went to sleep, I noticed that I had a terrible back pain. Like uh, electric shocks were running through my back. So my father and mother took the car and took me to the hospital. And they stick me with a needle and a nice little punch of uh, painkillers. Of course, uh, I went all mumbly and we went back home. I went back to sleep and after some minutes it got worse. I got more and more pain on my spinal cord and it, I, I felt these uh, unautonomical like, movements that I, I couldn't even realize that were possible. We went back to hospital and I was smacking every place and I was really in great pain. So I was in the hospital for one week. We didn't know what was up. So they took the blood tests and uh, bone marrow samples and stuff like that and I didn't know what was wrong. And then one Friday, uh, I was in my room waiting for a doctor's round and doctor was about to give me a diagnose and uh, I didn't know what was up. So. Before doctors came, my father came into the room, and my father is not looking like a doctor. And my father came into the room, and he's a typical guy who doesn't show his feelings that much. But on that particular morning, he was a li little bit weeping and sad. And I asked, 
uh, father, what is up? You know more than me. And my father came into the bed and said to me that, son, you have cancer. And yeah, the room was silent. And, uh, and the name of the cancer was leukemia. And leukemia is such a hard word for me to understand because I didn't listen in the school. So it was with the AKA sign, same as death. So I thought for a few days that I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die alone in the hospital. I'm gonna go to Kuopio and die there with uh, different type of people from Savo. You know Savo people, that's, that's not the place I wanna die. <laughs> okay, I go there, I'll have my girlfriend lives in Kuopio. Sorry, sorry Kuopio. And uh, I went there and then the first week I took a lot of injections of uh, cell therapy, a lot of medicine. And I was weighing 72 kilos at that point. And after one week of treatments, I was 58 kilos, like really small. I threw, threw up all of my dreams, all of the things that I was working hard on, working hard on basketball, doing things. And I, I, I lost all of my hair and all, all the things that I imagined that I could someday, sometime and time in my life to reach again. So I had this one dream and one plan that, okay, if I want to survive, I need to have a reason to survive. So number one reason to survive was for me that I want to go to high school. I want to go back to uh, learning things. So at my, th the happy place for me was that there was a teacher that taught me a lot about things. So I did my 10th grade there and I raised up the bar so high that I got to the high school. And in ninth mo nine months that I got the treatment there, I almost died twice. So that was the point how I got reborn again into the world. So I came back to Uvascula, I went to high school, and I was the same guy, not motivated to sit and copy and write, and Ardo is like, yeah, I, lo I like that story. And um, I was there really depressed, eating a lot of cortisol, gaining weight, not being myself. And one good thing was that I was playing basketball with uh, the girls team, though, so that was really, that was bonus. So, but I didn't do that well because uh, in every one month I got uh, treatment to uh, prevent the cancer re recurrence. So that was the thing that got me down. So after two and a half years, I got dropped out of high school at Kanye West. And then uh, I went back home and got really depressed. I didn't know what to do. And I have l had a lot of pain on my hips and my legs. And I, at one time I was feeling that I, I cannot uh, sense my left leg. So we went a lot to the hospital and asked what, what is up. And I got an another diagnosis that changed my life. And I thought that I'm going to die again. Because they say that you have necrosis on both ends of your femur. So it's like death on your bone, if you know what I mean. And after that, they told me that, OK, we're going to restrict your walking and you're going to use wheelchair and sticks. So wheelchair and sticks. What looks like if you're sitting on wheelchair? It looks like this. Eating a cake, gaining some weight. This is me with North Carolina sweater on and hoodie on. And um, I didn't know what to do. I was dreaming about being in Paralympics or doing something, throwing ball from the ground up. And I was smiling because I, I thought that the world is a happy place. When there's a camera or people, I was always laughing. I was not uh, showing up my feelings. But at that point, I got really depressed. And it got so serious that at one point I thought that they're gonna amputate my leg, but uh, it was a really good thing that my mother took me to the hospital in Tampere where they were there to do um, hip transplants. So we went there and they said that, okay, we're gonna do it in one month. So be prepared. So we went there, 2003, they uh, replaced both of my hips. So the end of the femurs are now titanium, so my words got up, baby. So if I die, please place your bets. <laughs> it's worthy. It. It's not calcium, it's, it's titanium. So superheroes, they have something. And uh, at that point, I went back home. I got really good rehab for two weeks, and then they left me alone. I, I didn't have any superpowers to come up and say to the world, that please help me, because I didn't have the one, number one power in the world. What is that? What is the number one power in the world? I heard some coins dropping, that is money. I didn't have money. I didn't have money to save myself. 
I didn't have the power, the number one power in the world. And my family didn't have that neither. And uh, I had only one thing on my mind, eating junk food and playing video games. That was my power. And I was sitting a lot. And then after a few years, I was in so much pain that I felt that, okay, maybe I might just want to change something. Because I had these dreams of helping the youth, uh, playing uh, basketball and uh, being a gym teacher, doing things on my own. And I decided with my girlfriend, okay, I am going to switch up the game plan. I'm going to do something. I'm going to walk even though it's hurting a lot. So I started to suck in all the information from the internet. You know the place, www. And then I sucked everything that was health related. I started to do kettlebells, swimming. I started to go to the gym. I started to do everything. And I, I was talking, talking, talking for my girlfriend. And um, after that, a few years went by, I realized that, OK, I'm a teacher. Maybe I want to do some things. So I applied to School of Classical Massage. And uh, I got there. And after one, uh, month, uh, one year, I learned how to treat people, the ABCs of human, how to how to move, how to treat people, what, how the problems work, what is the system that we're in this suit. We know a lot about cars, a lot about computers, a lot about things, but how many of you know the ABCs of you? How many know? A little bit. Okay, think about it. And uh, after that, a few years went by, I went to work on Culture Collective with kids, because I was doing a lot of rap and uh, emceeing, doing things, and. Uh, doing shows with people, I realized that, okay, I want to do many things for the people. I want to share because I was getting back to life. I was gaining more power. I didn't have that much money, but I was gaining power and gain gaining joy to get back. And then I realized that, okay, I can save some money and uh, go to see the people who were the senses that I was reading from the internet. They were sharing the articles and the text on the for forums where the people were asking questions and the people were giving me the answers that I wanted to have. So I went to Sweden one day and I realized that, okay, this is it, I'm gonna do it. And went back home and I started my own company. And what I did with that company was teaching. I realized that I have all of these teachings that I wanna put back to the people of Uvasco, the people of Finland. So I learned from the best. I took it through my system and I uh, integrated it into my story. So I've been lecturing, teaching people how to, uh, how to treat your pain on yourself, how to do your things on yourself. What is the ABC of being a human? That is the thing I learned through my uh, flexible learning path. And I want to show you a picture. 10 years, this is me, 2004, rapping. Look at the cake on my tummy, look at the cake. And then, this is me one year ago at Harju after first run without pain. That was super, super moment. <laughs> and a good friend of mine, Ilari, was talking about hip-hop community and about things that there's no hi hierarchy and uh, things that we are equal. So I want to show you this uh, video from a youth house nearby here. And if R2 is DJ2, might just want to spin some ish, okay? As you can see here, this is the third European hip hop library. The youth and the kids of Uraskula have this idea. How about having donations, having people funding hip hop library? So, this is the place where we dwell. There are books, there are LPs, vinyl, singles, everything. There are DVDs. There are people, look at the kids. Playing the center. There are a lot of people, so this is the place where we this is the place where we go every Sunday and Wednesday. You're welcomed every Sunday from two to five. And uh, we've had panel discussions. You see here a lot of legends from Uvascula. You see Art, the finest guy here, playing stuff. So we're there giving the experience stories to the kids, to each other. We're teaching each, each other because all of us in this room who are yelling our uh, names. We have unique stories. We're all equal, we're all the same. The, the, the guy has beard, I don't have that lovely beard. There's guys up from Helsinki dancing. This is from a jam session two months ago. We were having a lot of fun. People were just jamming and doing great things. This is Vera, 
thinking that when it's my turn and he is there dancing. And a lot of people. And this is the thing in Uvasla. You know that this is the right place for people to dwell. It's not big, it's not too small. There is not that much of competition. Even though sometimes we compete in a nice type of way and dancing and rapping and doing things. And I want to show you this one more thing. Here's one of the oldest friends who has done a lot of things in here in Uvasla. So this is the one thing that we do in the hip hop community. We pay our as high uh, feelings for the people who were here before us, who were giving us the experiences, the stories and the teachings and the lessons. So this is what we are. This is who we are. We are sharing, we are caring. So, okay. Heidi was talking about superpowers. I don't, uh, don't want to go that far uh, because I think one of the things, people go through doors, people go through windows, people uh, can see through clothes, that is the one thing. <laughs> and then people want to get into leather suits. So put your leather suit on tonight when you go to the after party. And this is a picture from the hip hop library. You can see super people sharing their knowledge, reading books, Reading in an environment where they are really motivated. People go dancing, DJing, rapping, doing things, stretching out, being with the people. And you see a lot of kids reading books that they never have done before because the environment was not motivated enough. So now I don't talk about 30 day challenge. I say this to you now. This is a gift for you. Each one teach for, for your life. The best teachings and lessons you learn from the other people, please give it away. Give it away to the people that you love, the people you're surrounded by, like in this room today. And now, I just want to give power to the students, and enough with the talk, let's break it down. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.